Hey, Carlos, good to, to see you, to meet you. Uh, congrats on being drafted. I don't think we've talked to you since all of that, but I was curious, uh, are you living with your twin right now? And how is the, uh, the virtual uh, rookie mini camp going with both of you guys in it at the same time? Um, yes, I am uh, home with Khalil and uh, we're really just, uh, I mean, we're on two different schedules, but uh, usually we're meeting around the same time. So he'll set up shop somewhere in the kitchen and I'll set up somewhere else, usually go downstairs and uh, we'll do our own thing. I was curious, does it help having another person in there with you kind of going through the same thing that you're going through while everyone else is a little bit isolated during this? Yes, it does. We, uh, you know, we can look to each other like, you know, we see what each other is doing and then we just kind of check up on each other while, you know, while we're doing this, you know, see how they're doing it, see how, you know, we're doing it. And we just kind of, you know, go off that. All righty, we'll move on. Ryan Rutter, WTAE. Ryan, go ahead. Yeah, Carlos, just to follow up on that, um, what type of notes have you been able to compare with your brother as to his experience and yours from, you know, two different team experiences going through all this? Uh, we don't share any notes, but we just kind of talk to each other about, you know, what, what, the, what his team is doing different than mine. So we just, we're, um, this is all new to us. So we're just, you know, we're just trying to figure it out. We just kind of, you know, you know, share a little stuff. All righty. Uh, we'll give Jim Wexel 247 Sports. Jim, are you on? All right. We'll move on to Ray Fittipaldo. Ray, uh, go ahead. Oh, to the gym on the field anywhere? Uh, hey, Carlos. Uh, I was wondering, how do you stay in shape uh, physically? Are you able to uh, get into a gym to lift weights, to work out on any type of a field? What are you doing physically right now? Um, I am not in the gym, but I am. I do have a field to work out. I do a lot of conditioning stuff and uh, do a little bit of football stuff as well. All right, hey, let's move on to Jeff from 93.7. Jeff, go ahead. Hey, Carlos. Um, wondering if you've had a chance to talk with Cam Hayward or Stefan Tuid or any of the veterans and what those conversations have been like, if you have. <clears throat> yeah, I've talked to a few of the guys, um, but most of them, I was just asking for advice about, you know, them being in my shoes and how they handled it and, and uh, everything, um, just any piece of advice that I could get going into this thing. And uh, that's really all it was, little stuff about, you know, keeping your body right and and just staying in the best shape I can. That's pretty much what we've been talking about. Thanks. Go to Mark Caboli of The Athletic. Mark, go ahead. Hey, Carlos, I was just wondering if you, uh, how much nose tackle did you play in college? Uh, can you play it? And has there been any mention of that to you so far? Yeah, um, I'm, I was told to, to know all three or positions. So um, I did play in, in two, or me nose in 2018. I played strictly nose. So I knew all, I know how to play all three positions in college and they expect me to know all three positions um, for the Steelers. So, all right, let's move on to Ed Bouchette of the Athletic. Ed, go ahead. Carlos, following up with those conditioning, uh, are, do you have weights at home? Are you able to lift? And uh, if not, how do you keep up your strength? Um, I do a lot of band work. I have uh, a lot of bands, and we we kind of use that as our weights right now. And uh, but I'm not in the gym at the moment. Do you feel uh, do, do, you, do you feel as strong? I mean, are you are you losing uh, muscle tone or anything because of it? No, not not losing any muscle tone. 
uh, staying pretty fit, but just eating cleaner. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, Dale Lolly, DK Pit Sports. Dale, if you're on, go ahead. Yeah, I was just wondering, uh, we, we just talked um, with Chase uh, Claypool about the virtual uh, classroom stuff. How much were you able to, to learn from this, and, and what does that involve with you uh, in terms of, uh, of it's a little bit different for a, a defensive lineman as opposed to a, what a, a wide receiver is looking at, you know, <laughs> that kind of stuff. What, what, do you, what can you take out of those things? Um, I just, I really uh, been, we dove into the playbook about a week ago, a week and a half ago with Coach Dunbar, it should be me and him. So uh, I got to go over the plays before we went together him as a rookie class, as a defense so this will be my second time going through the, the installs. So I'm really just trying to, you know, fine tune everything and really um, dive into the defense. All righty, we'll move on to uh, Mike Prezuda, the DVE. Go ahead, Mike. Hey, Carlos, I, I am completely unfamiliar with virtual <laughs> rookie camps. Can, can you just plug in some details? What time did you turn on the computer today? Who was looking back at you? What did you talk about? How long have you been on it? Uh, anything you can do to paint a picture, uh, I'd appreciate. Well, I mean, uh, the virtual, it kind of explains it itself. But uh, we got on at like, um, it was uh, 11 Eastern time. So um, I think it was 10 here. So we, we met at 11 and we were done at four. But there were some breaks in between there. And uh, the first meeting was with uh, Coach uh, the, um, Coach Tomlin. And then we kind of split it up into special teams and then uh, position groups and stuff like that. And then we ended it with just our position groups. And that was that's pretty much like how they sp we split it up. Thank you. <laughs> All right, let's uh, move on to Will Graves of the AP. Will, go ahead. Oh shit! Are you there? Sorry, I can't. Like, I can't tell if you're on mute or not. All right, Carlos, I'm curious. Um, you mentioned talking to some of the older guys about being, in, you know, asking them questions and helping you get ready. But they were never in your position. This class is never. All those guys got to come here. they oh, two weeks after being drafted and kind of get their feet wet. Is there a concern, especially for somebody like you, that? a fear of quote falling behind just because of the circumstances. Yeah. I mean, there's a little uncertainty there just because, you know, this is a different draft class, you know, we're not able to be there. And uh, I mean, so it does raise a little con concern, but um, I'm really just focused on learning the playbook uh, right now. And uh, when we do get to be there, just, um, just going to work. Are they, but for quick follow up, are they have, um, are you filming yourself doing anything and sending it back to them? Or is it just pretty much like an honor system, like that they trust that you're out there kind of doing what you need to do right now? No, no, no. They, uh, it, it kind of an honor system. They, they, uh, I mean, they, they told us to be working out and being in the best shape. So they just kind of leave it up to us and I'm um, doing that. Appreciate it. Thank you. No problem. All righty. We'll go to Jacob Klinger. And live, Jacob, go ahead. So I'm curious, like, what's your? I um, sorry if you spoke to this earlier, it was choppy, but um, I'm curious what your initial impressions are, and how much guys like Cam Hayward and, and Stefan to it have, have reached out personally, uh, whether it be via text or or any Zoom calls. Could you uh, could you repeat that? Yeah, uh, what what have been your initial impressions of uh, Cam and Tua and some of the other guys on the line? Um, well, uh, Cam reached out to me, and he was just really uh, helpful. And he, he seems like a really good guy. I haven't met him in person or anything, but over text, he seems like a good guy and willing to help. And so um, I'm excited about that. And as well as the other guys, they were, you know, they were pretty open to about giving me advice and and everything. Thank you. All righty, we'll move on to yep, 
Thank you, Jacob. We'll move on to Aubrey Bruce of the Sentinel. Aubrey, if you're on, go ahead. Yes, uh, Carlos, I was wondering, um, you were talking about multiple positions, defensive end and defensive tackle. What's the easier for you to grasp? The plays in the sets for defensive tackle or the plays in the sets for defensive end? Uh, neither of them are easier. They, they, I mean, you're all essentially doing the same thing. Um, but there's just different stuff you have to know for each each uh, position. All right, let's try to see if we can get uh, Jim Wexel, uh, 247 Sports. Jim, hopefully we can hear you this time. Okay, can you hear me? Can you hear me You're this time? You're good. We can hear you now. Yep. All right, good. Hey, uh, uh, Carlos, tell me about your twin brother. Are you are you guys identical twins, and and how close are you? Is it uh, you know a pouncy kind of thing? Have you talked to the pouncies? Anything like that? Uh, I know of the pouncies and the uh, other twins, but uh, me and Cleo are really close, and uh, probably probably a little too close. But uh, we definitely are very like uh, close to each other and we're definitely involved in each other's lives and stuff like that. But we're just, what do you mean? What do you mean too close? Is it, uh, I know when twins are apart, sometimes there's a, there's an issue. No, uh, me and Chloe are fine being apart. Um, we're just super close. Like we, I mean, we talk to each other, even when we're not around each other, we're still texting and, and FaceTiming. Uh, thank you. All righty, we'll just uh, go to Tim Benz. Tim, are you on? Uh, I'm on. You got me there, Michael? We do, sir. Go right ahead. Hey, Carlos, I was curious about when you said you had played all three positions on the defensive line before at Nebraska, similar to what the Steelers are asking of you now that you are here. Based on what you've seen from the Steelers at those positions, how similar are the asks of what the defense wants from you at nose and defensive end from what you're used to at Nebraska? Um, the, the nose is, is pretty much uh, is pretty is pretty much the same as what I ran in Nebraska, but the uh, plays have different meanings, and each system is doing a little bit different. The end spot is a little more different than what I was doing in Nebraska, and uh, but the nose is pretty much the same. Was the end spot at Nebraska asking you to get up field more often, and is the end spot with the Steelers more about containing the run? Uh, the the end spot for Nebraska was just more of a get up field and contain, and uh, with the Steelers, I'm moving a little bit more. Thanks. <laughs> Close up shop with Chris Adamski. Chris, are you on? Yes, I am. Thank you. Uh, Carlos, nice to meet you as such as it is. Uh, how are you? Uh, have you been able at all to take a lot of times rookie classes uh, kind of form a bond for seasons and, you know, become friends. Have you been able to talk at all to whether it be Chase Claypool or Anthony McCoy, any of those guys that were part of your draft class or free agents and have any sort of friendship or bond with them yet? Uh, no, I have not. I haven't really talked to any of them. I, I mean, I kind of knew. I knew uh, I knew some faces from the East West Shrine game and the combine, but I haven't really been able to get to talk to any of them personally. And have you developed any? All right. I was going to say, what kind of relationship with your position coach and with the I mean, defensive coaches? Have you had any kind of, you know, feel for what your relationship is with them yet? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I feel like me and Coach Dunbar uh, get along really well. We've uh, we, we've been uh, FaceTiming and stuff this past week, going over plays and stuff. And uh, I've been meeting with him since, uh, you know, since the draft. So I've gotten a feel for how Coach Dunbar is, and I really like the way he coaches and the way he teaches. So I'm looking, I'm excited. Thank you. 